This sweater makes me feel like I'm like a good Christian girl. <laughs> And Megan, the, the Spine, Spine Breakers. Breakers, and we are going to do today a least favorite books of 2019 Vidya because we are yep. almost through with this year. Yep. Yup. So we're ending 2019 on a negative note. We're gonna just ride this shit wave on out of here. But we'll start 20, you know, 2020. Yeah. On a positive note, note with our favorite, with our favorites reads. So yeah. So we're just gonna, you know, get this out of the way. Get all this yeah. negative business out of the way. Um, and we're gonna drink some Jubilee Ale, which is so fun to say. So fun to say! From Deschutes Brewing. I think that we maybe had this last year, but it looked different. See, I have no <laughs> recollection of that, but I like, that doesn't mean anything. I remember the name, I feel. like I, The Jubilee Ale? Yeah, I don't know if we had it on camera or not, but I'm pretty sure I at least drank this at some point. Oh, Deschutes. Never it's disappoints me. Deschutes is definitely like one of my favorite breweries. Yeah. So tasty. All right. Would you like to start or? Sure. Do you want to do like absolute worst favorite last? Sure. Did you have any particular order to yours? There's one, there's one that is my most hated. Okay. Well then I will do my most hated <laughs> last. Okay. Um, I Like I really didn't read that many books this year at all stop end of sentence but like I didn't especially read that many books this year that I didn't like right so a lot of these didn't I didn't give terrible readings to so I would say probably the first one would maybe be the lost world by Michael Crichton and it wasn't like necessarily bad but it was definitely like I mean, it was Jurassic Park again. Right. Like, it wasn't yeah. that different. It was same shit, different day, basically. And God damn it, Michael Crichton. Like, why can't you write dialogue? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. Um, but, I mean, it's you can't really go wrong as far as, like, it's dinosaurs. and Right. You it, know. Was, it was a good time. It was a fun time, but it wasn't, yeah. like, a great book. So, and I gave that three stars just to give you an idea of like my yeah. <laughs> average ratings for the, the year. Yeah. So it's not even that I really didn't like it, it's just that it wasn't great. Um, I'll start out with, um, I think my most recent one, which is Probable Claws by oh. Rita Mae Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown. So disappointing. It was so disappointing. Um, it's a cozy mystery and I mean, I just thought it would be so fun and cute because I mean she lists her fucking cat as a co-author which is adorable and it's called probable, probable cause. cause like that's cute as hell yeah. so I was like just thought it would be really fun and cute and it was really neither of those things it was boring and cheesy which I expected but it was like pretty fucking cheesy and like the main mystery as I already said was pretty boring and also like the the clues that led to solving the mystery were also just improbable, in my opinion. Like, improbable I'm like, claws. nobody does that <laughs> shit. That's not a thing. Um, and then there was this whole side story set in the 1700s that didn't have anything to do with the rest of the book that I just didn't That's get. Right. I, I, I didn't care. Like, That's, I gave yeah. exactly zero fucks about it. So. That's really disappointing. Yeah, I would not have finished this book had it not had I not been reading it for the Read Harder Challenge. I definitely would have DNF'd it just because didn't care at all. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I guess next for least favorite would be um actually a Margaret Atwood book, um, Life Before Ooh. Man, which Ooh. again I didn't <laughs> dislike it. I gave it three stars, but. I'm used to Margaret Atwood like blowing my fucking mind grapes mm -hmm. and this book was like very mundane in comparison like it was it was definitely like my least favorite of her novels so far. It was fairly unremarkable which I did was not expecting from her so yeah. I, I don't really even have that much to say about it. I mean the characters weren't likable but like that doesn't really make me like or dislike a book necessarily. It was just really that the it just what didn't hold up to other yeah. books I had read of hers. So it's kind of disappointing. I was expecting like a 
a blind assassin reaction or like a handmaid's tale reaction. <coughs> no dice. <sighs> Sorry, I'm ill if you couldn't tell. But not with pneumonia this year. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I haven't been to the doctor and a lot of the symptoms seem very similar to when I had pneumonia. Oh. But not as bad. <laughs> um, uh, my next one is The Brief History of the Dead by Kevin Brockmeyer. This one sounded so cool. <laughs> um, it's a cool name. Yeah, it's about, it follows like two different sto related storylines. Um, one follows this woman who is in uh, Antarctica on a expedition for Coca-Cola. She works for Coca-Cola. And I think this is set maybe in the future. I don't know that it really says what time it is what time period it is, but um, there's definitely like corporations kind of mm. run everything, which I feel like we're getting close to we're that point, close, if not already. Yeah. Um, hey. And so she's on this expedition in Antarctica, which is just kind of a PR stunt for Coca-Cola. And while she's there, this um, deadly flu ravages the earth and um, kills everyone, basically. Okay. And, uh, so you're following her there, trying to survive in Antarctica, and then you're also following these people in this place, this like afterlife mm. place, um, where they just, they just call the city, um, where people, when they die, and there's someone still left on Earth who remembers them, they sort of live on in this city. So it sounds really cool, like a cool concept. Yeah. And I did enjoy it, like, most of the book, I would say. But the ending <laughs> so mm. pissed me off because it would just like I literally I was listening to it on audiobook and the chapter ended and I thought there was another chapter and then it said we hope you enjoyed this audiobook and I literally yelled what <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck I was just so mad oh god so I think I gave it like two and a half stars like not terribly low but yeah, I was bummed by that ending. That's fair. Um, okay, so really like the last book I have that I didn't care for is called Feral by James DeMonico and Brian Evenson. So again, this kind of sounded like a cool concept. Um, horrible, awful execution. So this girl's in high school <coughs> and all Sorry. of the... <laughs> is you okay? No, but I'll, I'll survive. Okay, so all of the men, they get hit by this virus, and all the men turn feral, basically. So they either want to, like, fuck all the women or kill them. And initially, it's just kill them. The whole, like, having sex with them thing comes later. But, like, initially, it's just they want to kill all the women. And so it's super tropey. And just real, like, so it has, like, this high school student. She's an athlete in high school. But she ends up turning into, like, Billy Badass Feral Man Assassinator. And I'm like, she's 17. Yeah. Um, and she like ran or played rugby or some dumb shit like that. I'm like, don't necessarily think that that preps you to kill, but it's fine. And then there was this whole like insta love thing because she encounters this dude who doesn't happen to have this virus and then they immediately fall in love with each other. <sighs> so it was, it was bad. Um, it was not, it was not good. So I think, what did I rate it? I gave it two stars because it, it wasn't so bad that I wanted to throw it, but like, mm -hmm. it was close. It was pretty bad. <coughs> Is that all you had? Because I picked five. I that's what we picked, normally did. Yeah, I picked three because I really didn't read, like I haven't read a whole lot this year. So that's, okay. that kind of fucked me over on, on I'll this. just do my last three then. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. So... My next one was another really disappointing one, which is Long Dark Night of the Soul by Susan Marvin. The cover of this book is just fantastic. I love it. It's an awesome cover. Yeah. And it the is. book sounded like it would be cool, too. It's supposed to be a horror novel. was not scary at all. Um, and then the, it, like, it's about this girl, I'm trying to even remember because it was, like, so boring that... I don't know if I fully remember the plot, but um, this young woman goes to England, I think she's from the US somewhere, um, goes to England for the summer 
and she's like gonna be like the a tutor for this boy mm -hmm. um and then some weird shit happens but it's not that <laughs> scary or interesting no. <laughs> Um, but it was just again like yours like super tropey mm -hmm. there was kind of insta love like she literally like sees this boy's father out the window and is like oh my yeah and so I was just like ugh, rolling my eyes through it a lot but it wasn't like the worst I think I gave it I think maybe two and a half stars again maybe three probably two and a half because it really wasn't that good <laughs> but yeah, I was just like really hoping that it'd be awesome because that cover was so good. It was a good cover. <laughs> it was a pretty boss yeah, cover. Don't judge a book by its cover, I guess. And then my last two are my controversial ones. Let's hear them. Lay it all out there. So first I have Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by mm -hmm. Philip K. Dick. Mm -hmm. um, and like I'm sure we'll get dislikes for this because I think we've gotten... <laughs> Anytime I've talked about not liking this book, we've gotten more dislikes than usual. <laughs> yeah. We get have, dislikes all the time now. But. Yeah, we do. But like, I have a theory about why we get dislikes for that book. For that book? Yeah. Is it just fanboys who love Blade Runner? Yeah, it's fucking dude, dude bros who love Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've never seen Blade Runner, so I can't comment on the movie. Maybe it's great. I, I don't like know. the film. The film, um, I, like. I think the film is good. But the I book, it. I was really enjoying the first half of it, um, and then the second half happened, and I was like, ugh. Because the, the world building is great. Um, I love, like, the whole setting and the, how the world works and everything. But the main character sucks, and I'm not really sure if he's supposed to be very likable or not. Because he's not really a great guy. So maybe you're not supposed to like him. But mm -hmm. also, I'm okay with characters not being likable if they're interesting. <laughs> but I didn't yeah. care about him. Yeah. Um, and there's like, I don't know. I just, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't care for it. Didn't, didn't care for it. Didn't care for I think it. I gave it three stars. Because like I said, the first half I really did enjoy. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm really going to like this book. And then the second half was just, was just <laughs> plummeted downhill for me. That's my first controversial one, and then my second one is one I feel really bad about uh -oh. <laughs> because it was in our first. <laughs> we read each other's oh, favorite books yeah. video, yeah, and it's a very beloved book on BookTube. But I fucking hated it, <laughs> and it's *The Shadow of the Wind* yeah. by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. I understand why you hate it. I do. Yeah, you? I, I do. I get See, it. See, and it's one of those books that like. The more I thought about it, the, the more, you more hated I it. hated it. <laughs> I get that. So I think I initially gave it two stars, and honestly, I would probably go back and give it one. Because I just, like, really fucking... Like, it makes me angry to think <laughs> about it. Especially the ending. Yeah, I can see that. With I their recaps. That. Like, what happened... Basically, <laughs> what... Basically... <laughs> <laughs> the thing that like really put the nail in the coffin for me fucking hating this book was the little recap at the end and what happened to what was her name Caroline or something yeah because I feel like we were supposed to hate her for not wanting to be with Daniel right who was a fucking like 14 or 15 year old boy he was a child whenever he wanted to be with her and she was a grown-ass woman yep I'm like, of course she didn't want to be with you. She's she was not a pedophile. Just because she was nice to you doesn't mean right. she's, she's in love with you. Right. Ugh. And maybe it made me so mad because I've been in that situation before mm -hmm. where, like, you're nice to someone and they think that that means you're into them. Mm -hmm. And, and then like, you're I'm the just asshole. a nice person. Yeah. Or I've literally had men be like, oh, do you want to be friends? Like, literally say they want to be friends with right. me. Yeah, sure and I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. And then it turns out that that is definitely not what no. they wanted. And I'm like... <laughs> Just be real about what you want, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that I... That just really pissed me off. But the whole book as a whole, I just really didn't like. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought the mystery was, like, really predictable. The character, Dan, the main character, Daniel, was boring as fuck. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was also, like, fell in love with every woman who was nice to him. And then also had no respect for the Cemetery of Forgotten Books. None. No respect. Just tell everybody about for it. his father. Yeah. And I was, yeah. I that book just really pissed me off. And, I, and it is like, I usually can understand why people 
people like books. Yeah. But I honestly don't understand why people love that really? book. I really? I love that book. I really don't. But <laughs> I think I like the atmosphere more than anything. And I liked, yeah. I did like the writing in it a lot too. So like, I found it problematic because I obviously like the way that they deal with female characters in that book is like not awesome. <laughs> um, but I, I really loved it. But I can also see why you would hate it. <laughs> so. Yeah. I guess I understand people enjoying the writing style, but I didn't think it was that special either. So I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't my jam. It's your cup of tea. But like I said, I can totally see like why you or anyone would hate it. Yeah. Like I can, I can get that. Yeah, but I didn't realize how many, I guess it is a pretty polarizing book because I didn't realize how many other people hated it mm -hmm. until we did that video and we had a lot of comments being like I also hate I that also book. hate but that I know book. it's like if you look on Goodreads though there's so many five-star yeah. reviews yeah so I don't know I also read a lot of it on the pl on a plane and I was coming I was going to and coming back from Spain so that might have played into it a little bit yeah a skosh <laughs> but I, I remember really loving it yeah but, yeah so those are our least loved books of 2019 yes um yeah i like i said i haven't i've only read like 29 books this year really so i don't have that many to pull from and i'm trying to only read things that like i want to read and i'm right. into yeah so i didn't have that many that i like didn't like yeah i'm at 78 books and i was like trying i'm hoping i can hit 80 just to make it a yeah Nice yeah, you can tote to 80. This beer is good. Yeah, it's I mean, really good. To shoot. Doesn't disappoint, really. I was trying to, like, think of how I would describe it. I would say malty. Yeah, it doesn't taste like... <clears throat> I'm getting more of, like, a stout vibe from it than, like, mm -hmm. a winter ale vibe. Maybe somewhere between a porter and a stout. Yeah, but I'm not getting a whole lot of, like... Because I feel like winter ales are usually more, like, spicy browns. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's still good though. It's, it's very tasty. Good. Yeah, um, I enjoy it. So let us know if you've read any of these books. Yeah. What you thought you about them? them? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you love them? Did you hate them? Yeah. <sighs> My brain is foggy right now, so I'm like, how do we end a video? How do? I feel like we <laughs> always do that. Like, even, bit, yeah. yeah. Like we're always just kind of like that. Uh, bye. bye. Let's just talk for 20 more minutes. Yay. That's why we ramble. For so long. Because we get real videos. awkward yeah. at the end of the video. So it's, we're Midwesterners. We can't say goodbye. We can't. We're just, like, that, comes, just talking. If you're not from the Midwest, let me assure you that that is true. Yeah. It takes us like 10 minutes to say goodbye and leave a room. Yeah. Also, we definitely all say ope all the time. Totally say ope. <laughs> um, yeah. Or like, ope, let me slide right past you. Mm -hmm. I've said that so many times lately. Or people say, excuse me. Oh, you're fine. Yep. Or oh, sorry. You're fine. You're fine. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. "Oh, you're fine today." Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. a yeah, it's a Midwestern thing. So those are those are true stereotypes. Yes. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Anyway, anyway. thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. See you in 2020. Oh, we'll see you next year, guys. <laughs> see you next decade. Oh shit. <laughs> Dad jokes.